supply of fencing I could do with, if it's the right price. Oh, have it electrified. Keeps cattle in, trespasses out. Not worth the bother. The ordinary mesh will do for me. <laughs> it's a bit for curiosity, isn't it? Oh, there's still one or two of them about in these parts. <laughs> Does it work? Work? Don't make me laugh. Hey, it's cheap, though, I'll say that for it. Oh, Just a few bob for the crowman when he comes round and mend it. Yeah, but what about efficiency? There's no such thing when it comes to scarecrows. If the rooks want your crops, then they'll have them. Oh, not in this age of technology, Mr Braithwaite. Now, have you seen the electronic crow scarer? No, I did see a picture of one in the Farmer's Journal. Oh. Yeah, well, next time I come, I'll pop one in the station wagon. Give you a demonstration, eh? <laughs> if you can get shot with these blasted rooks, I might be interested. <laughs> Shove off. Go on off it. You just wait to get that electric crow scarer. Then you'll know all about it. Another thing. What about me, then? What about old Wurzel? Uh, as bad enough as it is, what with not getting no wages. It's going to be even worse if it chucks me on the dustbin. Yeah, hey, I'm talking to you. You stupid great bundles of feathers. Shoo! Yeah! All right. If you won't shoot, there's only one thing for it. Take that! Yeah, and that! Yeah, you birds, you birds have seen it! Big at it! Yeah! I give you! I give you! Here you are, Mr. Collinson. Oh, I know the bookkeeping's thirsty work. Cheers. Cheers. You worship, sir. I'll just come back, back to me work, sir. Back to me, back to me, back to me. Right, whistle. This is it. Hello, Mr. Carmen. Uh, good morning, children. I'm sorry I can't stop the chat this morning. I'm far too busy. Why are you taking Wurzel? I'm taking him where he should have been taken long, long ago. Tell me something I don't know. Look! Where is he sending them? I don't know. Maybe to fetch other scarecrows. Pigeons have been back for ages. 
I think he was just giving them their exercise. You'll see. I mean, why should they take messages to scarecrows? Pigeons are afraid of scarecrows. Of course they aren't. But why they won't be scarecrows? They'd be scare pigeons. John, look! Told you. That's sitting here. Come on, let's get a bit nearer. Wait! Aunt Sally! Thank you, my man. I'm most obliged. If she's mixed up in it, he really is in trouble. Yes. Are we all here, Sergeant Petro? Ta! Very well, bring in the prisoner. Ta! Mercy, Mr. Crowman, your high majesty, sir. Whatever it is I've done, I won't do it no more, I swear to it. Just give me one more chance, sir. Untie the prisoner and put him in the dock. No, no, not the dock, Mr. Crowman, sir. No, not the dock. It'll bring me out. Turning Hold on to your heads with your hands. Repeat after me. May this head. May this head. Fall into a pig school bucket. Fall into a pig school bucket. If I do not well and truly. If I do not well and truly. Try worse or edge gummage. Try worse or edge gummage. And find him guilty, Armin. And find him guilty, Armin. Right, get set down. All present and correct, sir. Read the charge, Sergeant. With respect, sir, I can't read, sir. Oh, very well. I'll read it myself. Wurzel, Hedgerow, Gummidge, you are charged with that on diverse occasions you roam the countryside making trouble instead of carrying out your duties. That you abuse the gifts of speech and movement bestowed upon you. That you used your thinking head as a football and that you knocked off my head with a potato. How do you plead? Uh, I beg your pardon, Your Majesty. I've never pled. Not guilty, I suppose. You always were a terrible liar. Now, do you want your trial held in Worsley's or Yekety? Ah, uh, in Worsley's, if it's all the same to you, you protuberance. Yes, well, it's not all the same to me. We'll have it in Yekety or else we'll be here all day. It's not fair. Shh. Who is the prosecutor? What's that? Psst. What's it? What's the pros... What's... What's, what, whatever his hand might and his said. Prosecutor, laddie! That's the one who points a finger of scorn at you and tells his worship what a bad lad you've been. Call the prosecutor! Aunt Sally? Oh, it ain't fair! Why should Aunt Sally pros, 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 call me a bad lad? She's worse nor what I am. Oh, no, I haunt. Oh, yes, you is. Oh, no, I haunt. Oh, yes, you is. Haunt is. You heard what Aunt Sally said, laddie. She haunt. What's he going to do with you, beetroot face? Sergeant Beetroot face, if you don't mind, Sonny Jim. And I'll tell you what he's got to do with me. 
Aunt Sally and I have a little understanding. You never. Oh, yes, we have. You've been so busy chucking potatoes about and causing mischief, you haven't been able to see what's been going on under your very carrot. Sergeant Beetroot. Beg pardon, sir. Got carried away, sir. Aunt Sally. Aunt Sally, tell me it ain't true. You, you ain't gonna marry that there rotten old Beetroot, are you? He's only good for slicing up and pickling. I may marry him. I may not. We shall have to see. Aunt Sally isn't going to marry anybody, and if Aunt Sally doesn't get on with the case for the prosecution, Aunt Sally's going to find herself back in a trunk in Mr. Shepherd's attic. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Apologise, sir. At once, sir. Let the trial continue. And Wurzel. Uh, yes, you're all powerful. Be very careful what you say. If you're found guilty, you know what the sentence will be now, don't you? No, sir. Oh, yes, you do. Remember what happened to Tatty Bogle when he went to sleep in Farmer Thompson's best bed and refused to get up? <laughs> he were dug into the compost heap, your effervescence. Exactly. It was terrible. Continue out, son. Wurzel Edgerow Gummidge. Uh, yes, Aunt Sally. Don't call me Aunt Sally, you stupid thing. You call me Madam, and you call his worship your honour. Very sorry, madam. Uh, beg pardon, uh, uh, your effervescence. Wurzel Edgerow Gummidge, is it a fact that you did once throw a fruit pie at Mrs. Bloomsbury Bath? No, I never. May I remind you that you have taken the scarecrow's oath? Uh, I swear by that there wheat chief that I, I never throwed no fruit pie at Mrs. B Mrs. Bla 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 the fat lady with the answer. No, 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 I, I throw the fruit pie at you, madam, and you knows it. And for why? Because she threw a chocolate cake at me, Your Honor. I didn't. Did. If I threw a chocolate cake at you, it was for the simple reason that you threw a strawberry flan at me. Ah, ah, yes. But why did I throw a strawberry flan at you? I'll tell you why. Because you threw a bread and butter pudding at me. That is a lie. Take tears. Get on with it, Aunt Sally. Yes, Your Wurzel Edgerow Gummidge, is it or is it not a fact that you did deliberately and willfully throw this King Edward potato at his honour, the crow? <laughs> Your Eminence, I, I swear by my little Robin Redbreast life that I never throw no potato on purpose at your iron madness. I, I mean, I wouldn't, sir. I may be stupid, but I'm not barmy. Do you deny that this is a potato? Well, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to see it properly. Um, Your Holiness, may, may I have an opportunity to inspect the exhibit? Oh, very well. Thank you. That's a potato, all right. If you did not throw the potato, how did it come into contact with His Honor the Crowman's act? Um, you heard! And if you did, you should scream a muck out your ears! Well, you, you get me all modelled and middle, madam. I mean, the potato was thrown by me, but I wasn't thrown it at His Majesty the Crowman. I was only trying to do my job, Your Honor. I was throwing them their potatoes at them dang rooks. Wurzel, you went to Scarecrow School, did you not? Oh, yeah, that I did, Your Honour, sir. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, where I, uh, that's where I learned the one times table, Your Honour, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one and one is one, and, and, and another one is another one. And, 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 and I can't remember anymore, sir, because I haven't got my counting head on now. I'll go and fetch it. Stay where you are. And were you taught at Scarecrow School that the way to scare crows was to bombard them with potatoes? <laughs> I was not, sir. But begging your crowmanship's pardon, sir, I was desperate, Your Honour, sir. You see, in what runs Scatterbrook, he's thinking of buying electric crow scarers. Yes, I know all about that. And the main reason why you're here today is because your behaviour is bringing that day nearer. If these scarecrows are replaced by newfangled electronic crow scarers, it will be because Wurzel Gummidge has given hard-working scarecrows a bad name. <laughs> 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 
Sergeant Sally. Do you wish to question any witnesses? If your honour pleases, call Aunt Sally. Call Aunt Sally! Well, she's even more stupid than her what I am. How can you ask yourself questions, you stupid wooden headed clothes prop? We shall see. I swear to tell the truth, some of the truth, most of the truth, so long as it suits me. Is my name Aunt Sally? Yes, it is. Am I going to tell the court what happened last Friday? Yes, I am. Last Friday, A was going along the I Street. We knew she'd stop me, but a hulking, great, big, ugly, dirty scarecrow. Is that hulking, great, big, ugly, dirty scarecrow in court at the moment? Yes, he is. Can I point him out? Yes, I can. One moment, Aunt Sally. I think we have a visitor. What's that? Terrible news, that is. Well, you've all heard what the pigeon said. Your colleague, Soggy Boggart, has fallen into a threshing machine and needs immediate attention. I shall adjourn the court for half an hour. We are standing for his worship. Scarecrows. All right, all right, let's have you straightened up. You're not on your own with this. At your service, my dear. How long has the crowman been gone? Oh, he's, uh. He's been gone, uh. uh a long time. Which means he'll be back in, uh, let me see, uh, a short time. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be in his boots when he does get back. Yeah, and I wouldn't like to be in your smelly old boots any old time. You rotten old beetroot. That's all you are, you know. A rotten old beetroot. Never heard of a beetroot being a scarecrow. As a matter of fact, it's all the rage at this present moment in time, isn't it, Aunt Sally? I don't know, I'm sure. I don't mix with scarecrows socially. Far too inferior. <laughs> ah, that's right, Aunt Sally. You tell him. It wasn't what you told me in Mr Shepherd Pot in Shed when you said I was your hero. That's only because you got me out of that stupid old trunk. You didn't believe me, did you? <laughs> All you scarecrows are the same. Stupid, ignorant, common, dirty. You, you, you're sticking your head out a bit, my dear, but, but have no fear. Sergeant Beetroot will protect you. <laughs> right. Come on, get back, get back. Listen, you horrible lot of turnip heads. Anybody what tangles with this lady, tangles with me. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that tangles with words or gummage, tangles with this. Now, you stay where you are, Sergeant Beatrice, unless you want to turn it into bigger lily. Come on, Aunt Sally, we're going. Where are we going? Anywhere. Australia, Egypt, Bulgaria. <laughs> Let's go with it, my dear. Come any closer, and I'll turn you into an Eric. So you'll love you. <laughs> Not so brave now, are you? Now that old words has got his dander up. <laughs> Look at them, Aunt Sally. They're cowardly castles, the old other. Cowardly castles, you're back on the... Ah! Oh, oh, I know you're all in this. Get back, or there'll be a big bonfire in my garden tonight. Yes. Back. Come on, come on. Sir, you heard what the crowman said? Come on, you haven't got... Oh, you see, your ears get set down. Shall I continue with my evidence, sir? I have a tale to tell that will curl your honour's eyebrows, if you pardon the expression. After that disgraceful exhibition, I think we can make up our own minds. Thank you. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do you find the prisoner guilty or very guilty? Very guilty. Very guilty, your honour. All is a trial. What about his defence? I know it's not fair. Can anyone think of any just reason why sentence should not be passed? Yes, me. Silence! Stand and face your maker! Oh, please, Mr. Crowman, sir! Have mercy, sir! I don't know what it is I've done, but whatever it is, I won't do it no more, I promise. Please give me one more chance, Mr. Crowman, sir! Silence in court! All right! That includes you!
Wurzel, hedgerow, garbage. And this is going to hurt me much more than it hurts you. You've been found very guilty. It is therefore the sentence of this scarecrow court that you be removed from this place and taken to a compost heap, where you will remain for a period of not exceeding 14 days. After which time, you will be dug into the... No! We can think of a just reason why sentence should be passed. It's myself. It's not fair! Call this justice. He's not had a proper trial. How did you children get in here? What have you seen? Everything. And if you dig Wurzel into the compost heap, we're going to tell the police that you're holding him prisoner. Oh, my dear child, these are scarecrows. How can it be a crime to kidnap a few bundles of straw and a wooden doll? Uh, you'll have to forgive them, Your Eminence. Uh, uh, they don't know no better, sir. Go on, get out of it. What are you kids trying to do? Get me into more trouble? I like that. We're trying to get you out of trouble. It's too late for that young man. Wurzel's already had a fair trial. Oh, no, he hasn't. I've seen Charles on the television. You haven't heard the defence. You'd better leave. I'm sure your father's wondering where you are. And Mr Shepherd is wondering where his Aunt Sally is, too. And if we tell him that you've got her, you'll never be allowed to make another scarecrow again and you'll starve. Oh, a spirited young lady, aren't you? I see. Do I understand you want to make a speech for the defence? Yes. Then you may. Uh... Yes, well, I'm waiting. What have you got to say in Wurzel's favour? Uh, no. He sort of, uh... Hmm? No. No, I didn't. Uh, can we have time to think? I'm afraid you've had that time already. Wait! I know! He's kind to his Robin Redbreast. What, Robin Redbreast? Uh, the one who, who lives in my stomach, your grace and favour. But I got rid of that robin's nest months ago when I cleared out the field mice from your elbows. Yes, uh, that you did, your eminence. Uh, but her uh, come back, you see. Her uh, nowhere to go. And so being, being a bit kind in the end, I, I let her come back in. And he feeds her on biscuit crumbs and blackberries. And every Sunday he gives her a whole bottle of milk. Uh, steals her whole bottle of milk more like. Uh, uh, finds it, your worship, sir. Finds it, yeah. People leaves it hanging around on doorsteps. <laughs> so if you throw Wurzel onto the compost heap, what will his poor Robin Redbreast do? Fly away, of course. Uh, uh, excuse me for interrupting your eye, Madness, uh, but her uh, can't fly away, is he? Or is nesting? Or has got little tweeties. Come and have a look, your worship. Come on, everybody, come and have a look. <laughs> Don't make too much noise. Come on, have a look. Yeah. Are they real? Oh, yes, they're very real. All right, Wurzel. You've saved your neck. But. If Mr. Braithwaite of Scatterbrook decides to put you in the dustbin because you're lazy, incompetent and mischievous, don't expect me to help. Now that I won't, Your Eminence. Very well, Wurzel. Case dismissed. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, 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 very much. Very much. Come on, Eminence. All right, back to work. 